Put on your spurs and join us as we head over to the OK Corral to talk about the 90s. Cl- Wait, that was a little too fast. That was cokey. <laughs> Put on your spurs and join us as we head over to the OK Corral to talk about the 90s classic tombstone. Isn't that a daisy? Welcome, friends, to the 3324 Podcast. Dean Legiro here with Eric Kuber. Hello. How are you, sir? I'm good. Yourself, sir. I'm doing well. We can't talk about a movie. It's like the new thing without bringing bringing in the the heavy the, guns, oh, especially on a western. We need the heavy. In this case, we need, it's we the need, posse. Ooh, I like that's that. it. Yeah. We yeah. need to recreate the 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 Earp faction <laughs> of Wyatt Earp, Doc Holliday, Morgan, and Virgil Earp, and we have four guests. There here. you go. I mean, two guests and two of us. So right, making their triumphant. I don't know how many times it is at this point. Five, six, somewhere in there. Uh, Nick Leshy, welcome aboard. Thank you. I feel like we're the immortals. Hello. That's it. <laughs> All right. And uh, also joining us triumphantly is uh, is Sean Grady as well. Hello, Hello Sean. Welcome. Great to be here, guys. Thanks yep. again yes. for having me. Always a thank pleasure. Thank you, guys. Yep. Yeah, thank you guys for coming. It's uh, it's always fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can uh, check us out on, on Instagram and Facebook at 3324 Podcast. Always a lot of fun information there. So... Uh, join the group. Join the fun. It, it's it's a lot of uh, a lot of interesting people, and uh, a lot of great music and movie information there. So um, we're talking about Tombstone. Um, I'll, I'll put it out there. When we do favorite, if we do favorite scenes, we get to favorite scenes. I'm just going to say it's the whole film. I agree. <laughs> yeah. The whole like yeah. this is a film that is just like I you know I don't know that you can that there are so many great scenes that I'm not sure that there are ones that are highlighted because they're all on such a great level, but we'll get to that. We will get to it. At least that's my opinion. So let's get into the stats. This film was released on Christmas day in 1993. Budget was a meager $25 million. Mm. Not really a lot considering the payroll of people they paid to be in this film. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the return on investment was meager at the time. This was not considered a raging success, a very odd, very odd duck at the time. Uh, it made $73.2 million back, you know, in, in box office directed by George P. Cosmatos. Uh, not a very prolific director. We'll talk about him a little bit and written by Kevin Jar or Jarre or Jar. It's, I think it's Jar. J J A R R E. Maybe maybe it's Jar. It's up on Instagram and Facebook. Let me know how to say that, or I can put it into Google and have them just pronounce it for me. But I didn't even want to do that much. So um, it's, it's fun to hear you try. Yeah, that's, you know, well, where would we be if we didn't try? Exactly. Right? That's right. It, it's, except for my failures, just seem to be out. Like my Nicholson impression on Fugit. It's just my my failures are out there for everyone Some, to see. Sometimes bad impressions are good impressions. Just because there you go. That's it's, how I feel. It's Deed's take exactly. Yeah. yeah. In, in my mind, it sounds like it. <laughs> hey, that's all that matters. Right. So, so it's I guess in your I head. guess I guess American can, Idol is not in the cards. You can for me. hear it. That's all that matters. That's right. I can, <laughs> I can certainly hear it among other among other voices and impressions in my head. So, <laughs> so let let's talk about uh, about Tombstone. What one of my favorite films? It's it's no. oddly enough called a cult film. Hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah, I. Well, yeah, it is odd because I I, <laughs> I remember. Oh Jesus, Dean! You you were anticipating this movie forever. I mean, we, we, you were talking about it for months before it even came out. You, I even bought the saying, novel, the oh, novelization you, you of Tombstone. Wow, you did. He was obsessed <laughs> with this film, guys. He was absolutely, you know. And of course, when it came out, we we saw it together. And yeah, um, and yeah, it was it was great. It was just yeah. Great. I I, so. I think I think cult status is is maybe, um, based on the fact that it didn't do a lot at the time. And so it was kind of like shuffled off to the side, but then the advent of, of streaming mm. uh, YouTube and, and clipping a, a lot of these great scenes kind of started to elevate it to that legendary status where it, where from a cult standpoint, people didn't see it when it came out as much. Yeah. And then over time, people started to discover it. Nick, do you think that's what cult means in this I think so aspect. I mean you mentioned the box office I don't think it was a disappointment by any means I think it probably performed better than maybe they thought given um, the directoral 
issues that it had, right? It was it started off with one director who got dropped out, and then you mentioned Kevin Jar. Dire- Kevin Jar was yeah, the original the director, director. And and I think he was in over his head, right? It, he yeah. hadn't directed anything before, and this new director who came in, you you look at it, what a great piece of work. But then you look at his other body of work, which you mentioned wasn't that much. What was it like a handful of other films? And I probably can't even name what those other the- films were. But, I actually knew him from uh, – he directed Rambo First Blood Part Two, which oh, was like right. the best Rambo. So I, I would argue that. I was that. familiar <laughs> with George Cosmatos because of Rambo. Then I he think First Blood Cobra. is probably better. Huh? But yeah, yeah, Cobra like, was like, fun. Yeah, Cobra was but, fun. But not – yeah, but but this guy was not a prolific director. I mean he directed like 10 films and his first one was in 1971. So okay. not – like a regular working director, which is very odd for that. And then all of a sudden he's, you know, when he did Rambo first blood part two, I think that got right. him a little, a little mojo, you know, did Cobra. He did a movie called Leviathan after that. And mm-hmm. then this, and then th- oh. there were rumors that Kurt Russell kept saying that he actually did the directing, mm-hmm. you know, I, like I read yes, something, about you know, that. so I don't know what's true and what's not, but you look at this movie and it is visually wonderful. The performances are great. So I think over time, as people have watched it, like you said, on streaming and other other means, um, it, it's probably people have said this is this is a classic. This is one of the better westerns maybe ever made, which is saying a lot considering how many westerns have been made. Yeah. I would say this is probably in people's top ten list, if not top five list. Um, would you say any of you that this is, you know, yeah. Sean? Where do you think that that lands for you? I yeah, it's it's. Are a, you a western? Are I'm, you a western well, fan? I, I'll say well. To some extent, um, okay. but probably the more the recent westerns. Mm-hmm. But I, 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 it's up there in my in my in my top probably top three, maybe it, top two. It I and I think it's the cast. I, I mean that that's a, we'll talk about it. I'm sure, but that cast goes on for days. Mm-hmm. With the amount of people that are in that movie and the performances they give, and this is a movie that I. I it's one of those when I see it on like a TNT or something or AM, I'm like, uh, 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 okay. <laughs> and I sit down and I'm like, I'm going to watch this because I want to see, I want to watch this scene. Yeah. And then next thing you know, I've finished the movie and an hour <laughs> yeah. and a half, two hours have gone by. That's, that's called it. That's called a remote drop movie. Yeah. Just like, like we talked about a few good men and yep. good fellas. Like when, yep. it, even if it's on regular TV and it's cut to pieces, it's like, I'm putting the remote down and, yeah. and I'm in. Now, Eric, you're a big Western fan. Yeah. So yeah. where, you know, and, and in the early nineties, we kind of saw, you know, we, we saw a reinvigoration of the Western genre with two films specifically Unforgiven and Dances with Wolves. Mm-hmm. Those two films came out really kind of on top of each other and kind of revitalized like the new Western, something that was a little more uh, realistic in its yeah. treatment of indigenous people, uh, just in, in, in the a grittier look at, at things, especially un- Unforgiven with its takes on violence. Yeah. Uh, this comes out not not two years later, and and actually, Eric, before I, I let you go <laughs> into it, there there was a foot race between this and another film that Kevin Costner was working on called Wyatt Earp. Yeah. Uh, that these these movies were in production simultaneously, uh, and and Tombstone made it made it out of the gate first, and then Wyatt Earp would come out in June of 1994. So it came out six months after this, mm-hmm. but a totally different, uh, more more akin to. Dances with Wolves. More epic. Or, or The yep. Postman. You know, <clears throat> Costner was doing these bigger epic films at the time, and mm-hmm. Wyatt Earp was was along those lines. Yeah, I mean, this. <clears throat> there's no doubt that this film, I mean, it's no surprise that Cosm- Cosmatos, you know, his direction of the film, and, and Nick, uh, going back to what, you're, what you were saying about Kurt Russell uh, directing the film, he might have mu- wanted to direct the acting portions of it, but Cosmatos definitely, you know, he was skilled at the action. And this is one of the great action Westerns of all time. I think I agree. It, it, you go back to the, the, <clears throat> uh, old Hollywood days of like stagecoach and the John Ford type stuff. And I think this is kind of, kind of trying to recapture that, that form. Cause like you say, Dean, like Unforgiven came along and this is like not, there was hardly any action in that movie whatsoever. It was much more esoteric, more, thematic take on violence and, mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. And it was sort of like, you know, b- breaking the genre as it were, just to kind of break it down and just to kind of get rid of those tropes. Uh, but this came right back and it, and it just completely set that bar up again. So yeah, it was a pleasure to see. It was a pleasure to watch. Um, it's always fun. You know, um, it may, you know, I don't know if it, uh, part, parts of the movie as I watched it, I uh, did watch it a couple of times and they're just, I, I have my issues with it, but it's, it, they're minimal. 
but it is an easy watch. Couple, well, there's a couple of faux you know. pas. There's, there's, a, there's one really big blooper that I can't, <laughs> I can't un- there's two big bloopers, but one yeah. I really can't unsee. Let's, let's get the Kurt Russell thing out of the mm-hmm. way because yeah, it, this, this thing of Kurt Russell's shadow directing the film kind of came to light like, like maybe a year or two ago, maybe yeah. around that time where all of a sudden, for some reason, he started saying, well, I was really kind of behind the scenes kind of doing things and, and and doing rewrites on the script because, you know, Kevin Jar got after a month got, you know, got booted. So they brought someone else in. So so it seems like Kurt Russell was kind of trying to keep everything together and, and kind of maybe maneuvering things from behind. And then Val Kilmer had come out and said, yeah, this was true. He, yeah. he kind of backed up Kurt Russell. Michael Bean, who plays Johnny Ringo, says, I was never directed by anybody but George yeah. Cosmatos. <laughs> like, so, so well, like, what was, was George Cosmatos like a figurehead and just a guy behind the chair? And then was, was, you know, Kurt Russell really just the main, me that maybe the driving force behind the project to keep it, keep it moving forward. And, you know, I guess, I guess, you know, some of this, this is hindsight, you know, it was 2020, of course, but at, at the time and for years, it was never, nothing was ever said otherwise. That, well, I, that I, I think it, 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 Cosmatos, I mean, he came in to take over. Um, I don't think there was maybe enough of his <clears throat> particular vision on it. So I guess there had to be somebody in place in yeah. the production that was keeping things going. And, you know, he was focusing more on the, probably more on the visual aspect. and Just getting the work done. Getting the probably. work done yeah. and, and setting up these great action, you know, sequences and stuff. And and I think Kurt Russell probably looked at, and, and Val Kilmer both are, you know, we're probably looking at it from more character study and, and authenticity mm-hmm. to the characters, to the real, you know, the real figures in history. So I know there was a lot of that going on too. They, they really delved deep into the, into the, the real story. You know, most of these, these, you know, the adaptations of this story always ends with the OK Corral. That's the big moment. Yep. And here is they, they they completely take it to, you know, in a much bigger than the OK Corral mm-hmm. is just a footnote in this yeah. film, you know. Yeah. So it's just so I like, yeah, I like that take on it. I like, you know. Yeah. The, the, the actual OK Corral incident in, in real life was probably minutes, maybe three or four yeah. minutes. Yeah. There was a 1950s version of this film with Burt Lancaster and Kirk Douglas <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, DeForest Kelly was actually in it as yeah, well. It was, it was good. I, uh, I enjoyed that but, one. But it was totally inaccurate. Like, like they, yeah. they went out to like this ranch out in the middle of nowhere, which was the OK Corral. The shootout was like 20 minutes, yeah. you know, re- you know, like a really glamorized version of it. So br- bringing it back down to like its, its actual reality was important. Um, and, and like I said, yeah, that like this is more about all the events that kind of lead up to that because it's not even – at the end of the film, what ha- the, the the gunfight? There's a whole lot right. of, of other stuff. Um, all right, let's talk about the cast mm-hmm. because I, I got the I got the feeling that someone was just going around Hollywood with a dart gun and just <laughs> blowing darts and knocking people out and dragging them and saying, "You're in this film now." Yeah, because it, it seems like everybody like you can't you. I, I've never I, honestly I've never seen a, a movie so deep. No, with people and, and and not even like oh that's a, a character actor like M. Emmett Walsh and I don't know his name but I know his face. These are all people at that time that that were known, right? So we're gonna roll through. Jeez, start with but the narrator, you know right? Th- this is gonna take up most. Of, this yeah. will take. This will t- yeah, even the, even Robert Mitchum. I mean, this is gonna probably take up most of the episode. It's just me going through the cast. So yeah, we're, we we won't have a lot of talking to do. So Kurt Russell. Val Kilmer, Sam Elliott, who was known for his Western work. Yeah. So that's like getting the ringer. I, I don't think you can do a Western unless Sam <laughs> Elliott is in it these days. That's right. That and, voice. and and one of the one of the things with Tombstone and, and one of their their famous claims to fame is that all the mustaches are real. That's so what, there was yeah, never yeah. like yeah. in no, Wired Up there was some fa- fake mustaches, but in uh, in Tombstone they were all real. Uh, but if Bill you look Paxton, at a picture, if you look at a picture of Wyatt Earp. You know, his mustache went like past his chin. So yeah, you, you think got the, the real you know, mustaches that, were tough. The handlebar mustache, which was like, it was the fashion of the time. Of course. Uh, Powers, <laughs> yeah. Powers Booth, Michael yeah. Bean, Charlton Heston, Jason Priestley, John Tenney, Stephen Lang, Thomas Hayden Church, Dana Delaney, Paula Malcolmson, who would go on to be in Deadwood as Trixie. Yeah. So she really wasn't known here. Uh, Dana Wheeler Nicholson, who was a, who was a kind of an up and coming actress at that time. Joanna Pacula, who was who was very prolific at the time. Michael Rooker, who would become mm. Yondu. 
in the Marvel Universe, Harry Carey Jr., Billy Bob Thornton in a small role, and he's barely recognizable because he's a little bit heavier. Johnny Tyler. <laughs> uh, Paul Ben Victor, another character actor mm-hmm. who's great. Uh, Robert John Burke, who, who replaced Peter Weller as Robocop. Uh, yeah. Billy Zane, John Corbett, Terry O'Quinn, Ro- and Robert Mitchum as the narrator. I mean, Wait, you're not going to leave out Frank Stallone, are you? Frank Stallone, Frank, right? Yeah, Frank Stallone, Stallone yeah. Okay. As, as, as Ed we, Bailey. As Ed Bailey. I mean, God, like, how could you, you know, this is real, His literally a who's who. It's so much fun. Uh, it's so much fun watching just all these familiar faces. That was half the, that's the half thing the is, 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 is you've got, is. you've got a cast that's like stacked and, and even bigger actors are playing smaller roles, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's, you know, I think that's what, what also helps this film and, and cost Costner's white or kind of tried to, obviously they weren't, you know, they're filming, you know, at the same time, but they tried to go deep with their cast as well. But I think this is a better cast. Yeah, Absolutely. I think so. Even though I think, and this is probably one of the, my pet peeves, one of my problems with the film is that some of these uh, actors are, are terribly uh, underused. Like uh. Sam Elliott, in my opinion, yeah, should have had a much bigger role. Charlton Heston, I mean, come on, he's barely in it. Um, you know, he gets, they give him this little cameo and he's just a, like yeah. a ranch, you know. Henry Hooker. That's Charlton Heston, you know, like, <laughs> you know, you're going to get this guy on board, to, you know. So that, those were a, a couple of my, but other than that, I mean, you had a lot of these, these characters that you at the, like Dean was saying, like at the time had made like popular, you know, really great pop cultural type films like Bill Paxton. And, you know, so it was great to see these, like these faces. Yeah, it was, it was. It was yeah. And fabulous. even like Jason Priestley from 90210, Priestley. just like <laughs> across the board, like getting people yeah. just from everywhere, you know, Powers Booth was 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 kind of you know hitting it pretty hard back then too as doing a lot of work extreme prejudice with uh, with Nick Nolte and just yeah. doing a lot of great film work so uh, you know Bill Paxton he's like the everyman right i mean kind of <laughs> you see yeah. him he he almost looks like like the 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 western version of Chet from you know yeah. weird science from weird science <laughs> <laughs> yeah he was like very even tempered in this movie too. It was so like it's it's weird to see him so like you're used to seeing him like game over man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those hunts and yeah. aliens, and he's like the usually the the guy that's flipping out right. Even in yeah, even in Terminator, he had point. that you know he had that cameo in Terminator where he was like the punk right, and the, Arnold yep. takes the clothes from him you know. But uh, but here he's just very mild mannered, and he's like you know he's. Obviously, the uh, the sensitive one of the three mm-hmm. and hero worship uh, uh, worships yeah. his brother. Absolutely yes. worships yep. the ground that Wyatt walks on. You know, yep. you, the, it comes up throughout the movie. You're the one. Yeah, you're the one because it's always like every even the older brothers. You know, Virgil and there are some other brothers that weren't portrayed are mm-hmm. are always seem to be looking at Wyatt. Yeah, you know, they always seem to be looking at, at to him as like the guy with the answers or the guy with the direction, the guy with the plan. Right. You know, and I, I just thought that was kind of, you know, I don't know if it, it was because of his celebrity at, the, you know, Wyatt Earp's celebrity at the time, or that was just the family dynamic from, from the get go. Yeah. I, I think the, um, the point you make about hero worship, I think that really comes through in this death scene when Morgan, you know, I, I think cause you have that scene when he becomes, he takes the badge and Wyatt is like, we can't go down this path. You know, we're just here for business. You know, that's just going to lead to more trouble and, you know, and then when he's on his deathbed, he's just, you know, he, I, he looks at him, right? What does he say? He sounds like you were right or, you know. Yeah. So don't they, let him get you too. Yeah. yeah, go, yeah. You know, like yeah. they got, they got me good. You know, mm-hmm. don't let him get you as well, yeah. which, which is interesting because, you know, it, throughout the movie, Wyatt Earp, he almost seems like he, he'll introduce himself and people like, he's like, I'm Wyatt Earp. And the bartender's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> like, like you're like, you're like, no, you're like, you're, yeah. you're like, you're not this celebrity. And then, and then when Billy Bob Thornton encounters him, it's, it's a different reaction. It's like, holy crap. Like, well, I'm not even going to mess with him. Like, yeah, but, but, but Wyatt Earp seems unfazed by his own celebrity. Like, it's not like, like, you know, because I, I don't think he's impressed with himself in that way because when, when we meet him in the film, he's kind of done with that. He's kind of like, you know, yeah. He understands like his reputation is because of, of killing people and, and that kind of stuff. And that's, that's what he also tries to impart on, on Morgan mm-hmm. is you don't, you think you want this, you think you want to emulate me. Right? right. And then after the gunfight, there's that, that scene when they're sitting there, you know, yeah. and, and Morgan's like, it's not like I thought it would, yeah. you know, like, it's not like I thought it was going to yeah, be like, you, I thought you, this don't, was you a, don't, 
ever want to know thing and you're killing yeah. people and, and it's not, you know, like you don't ever want to know what it's like to kill a man, Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, and that's, you know, that's heavy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of those themes about, about why it just, you know, under almost like trying to, trying to fight against his destiny. Like he's trying the, his hardest to not involve himself in things. He, he knows that the Cowboys are no good, right? There's the, the great scene in, in the first scene when when uh, when Wyatt's dealing Pharaoh and all the cowboys come in, right? We've got the you know with with Michael Bean and, and the <laughs> Latin Johnny. scene. You know we don't want trouble in any language. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's such a that's uh that's that's a killer scene. Um, and oh my god, the uh, the absolute the eye staring, the you know uh, just the duel of eyes you know between Val Kilmer and Michael Bean in that scene is just fantastic. You can't get any more tense than that. And they picked the two, two guys that were, you know, probably not that familiar with the Western genre per se. I mean, I right. don't know. I mean, I, you know, I'm, you know, but they nailed it. They nailed that, yeah. you know, that old school like stuff, right? You know, the, sh- the the two guys in the street, you know, they were ready to do it right then and there. And it's yeah. just, you know, just, the, the, just the, the, yeah, the building, yeah. the building of the, the tension. tension. And he had, yeah. That's why he had that gun underneath, right? Because he said, if yeah. something's going to happen, yeah. I'm ready. You know, he's always, he's always got the backup. Yeah. Now, in that scene, there, there's a lot of Latin that's being spoken. Yeah. I took the liberty of finding the translation in case of it. If I am interested. Of course, I am course definitely. Of course, I took Latin in high school, so I caught the rest in peace at the end. But yes. you are so, the, you are the trivia master. He's the <laughs> he's the guru. Like yeah, so of there, course. There, you. There, you know, the translation I found is is the actual translation, but then what they really mean. Yeah. So it, you know, Doc, Doc Holiday says in vino veritas, which means in in wine is truth. Which mm-hmm. which so the subtext is when I'm drinking, I speak my mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and Johnny Ringo says, Aji Quadagis, which means, you know, well, do what you do best, you know, you yeah. know, talk. And then Doc Holiday, Krejot, you know, Judeus Apello uh, uh, Nonego, meaning I don't believe drinking is what I do best. <laughs> that there's something else I do better. <laughs> uh, and then Johnny Ringo says, Eventus Stultator Magister, which means fools have to learn by experience. Meaning yeah. here, you, you want to you want to find out you can, you, uh, you know, I'll, I'll let you know. And then, like Nick says, uh, he says, Doc says, in pace resquiat, it means it's your funeral. <laughs> so basically, <laughs> saying, you know, they're, they're kind of, yeah. you know, having this subtext of, you know, uh, drinking is not the only thing I do. And, and you know, and Johnny Ringo said, well, I can, I can teach you if you think you're the best. And mm-hmm. then, you know, and then Doc it's funny, says, it's, it's, it's so funny that they, 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 you have this long extended and they just kept it going. And obviously, they're both very educated. And then now I really hate them. But yeah. then Holiday comes around and he starts and he says, you're no Daisy, which mm-hmm. of course translates that you're not special. Right. You suck at this. <laughs> you know, like, you know. You know. Um, so yeah, he goes from that to that, which I think is oh, it's just the transition, you know, is, is great. Yeah. And I, so. I kind of like that they don't put the subtitles for the Latin because you, mm-hmm. you, you don't oh, need no. it. You don't need no. it. You, you know no. that whatever's being said there is something that is you know each one is get trading shots in the in the language and you see it in their eyes like you said and and uh and then i love i love how it plays out at the end we know how yeah. it plays out yeah and, mm-hmm. and just the way kilmer responds like well like the first time he hears johnny ringo say latin he responds almost like in a whisper like he's yeah. responding in latin but almost like in a whispering tone like I can't like almost like I can't believe that um uh, someone else is talking. But like I, he thought he was going to be slick and just kind of throw yeah. out some Latin, and then this other guy's coming back, and he's like, you know, well, he says uh, he reminds and then they have him this of whole himself, conversation. Right? What's yeah. that? He reminds him of himself. He said, but yeah. obviously yeah. not as good. And that's why he know? hates him. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> right. he he, he really personifies hate. his worst he, his worst impulses. Yeah. But to Sean's um, point about not having the subtitles, I also thought that was great because we were like the people there watching. Right. We That's didn't know what they were saying, but the tension was there. Like they were playing the against each other. All. Yeah. And it was like, it was great. And yeah, it's, it's like, also the tension in, in all the other characters as well, because they're part of the audience too. I mean, the, the, everybody's watching, you know, so everything is being felt in the room, you know, in the scene, but also in the theater. You know, we're all in the same, <laughs> in that same boat right there, which I, th- I think so, is great. Sean, Sean, do you think that this was this was Kilmer's film to 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 blow? Meaning, is it is it, is it was this like? Yeah. Seems like everybody that's all they ever talk about now is Kilmer and Doc Holliday and the quoting. I would I would say this is his film, even though it's 
not supposed to be. I think he walks away with the film. Now, any scene that he's in, um, like I said, if I if he's on, boom, I'm watching, I'm in, and then I'm sucked in for the rest of the movie. <laughs> I love this. Every scene that he's playing cards, those are my three favorite scenes. Um, yeah. The one we just talked about, the one with Ike, and then the one with Ed Bailey. Yeah. Um, the spelling bee? The spell. Oh, my God. Have <laughs> a spelling contest. I, I love if you weren't my friend, I don't think I could bear it. <laughs> like, it's yeah. just like I, I, I I'll tell you what, what, when I first, I remember when I saw this, I, I remember seeing this in, in the theater and I remember the first time Kilmer spoke, I was like, what the F is this accent? I said, what is, what, like, I didn't get it at first. I'm like, he sounds really strange, especially in the old West. You're here, used to hearing y'all and yeah. this kind of thing. And he's got this uh, aristocratic southern kind of He's weird a southern gentleman. but not yeah. but not a real southern drawl it, it was right. very strange to me and it kind of like yeah. you know and I, I and i think he he sought somebody out to really find out how aristocratic southern people spoke at the time and mm-hmm. i mean and that's kilmer was like at the you know this was at him at the height of his powers i think yeah um and did you say he's method i, I think he's ego you know, he, he's, he's, okay. he, I think he's ego actor. Like, okay. I, I think he got caught up in that. I think he got, got caught up in, in, in thinking he's method, but he's yeah. just such a, a great actor that I think yeah. he, you know, things got, got away from him and he made choices personally, like, or, or on movie sets that kind of really made him not bankable mm-hmm. anymore. I think this, this um, film certainly would make a great case for that though. Yeah. Oh no, absolutely. You know, to say, to, to, you know, to say that as him as an actor, as he, you know, this could be, you know, yeah, you're, you're definitely method with it, you know. Yeah, like I mean, people talk yeah. about this more than his portrayal of Jim Morrison at this point. Right? I, I mean, nobody yeah, talks yeah. about The Doors, which was yeah. his showcase Sorry. film. And, <laughs> you know, you want to talk about Method. He was, you know, call me Jim on the set and all this kind of stuff. So, you know, the fact that that a supporting role for Kilmer is the one that he's best remembered for. And, and yeah. a lot of people now, in retrospect, say he should have been nominated for oh, an Oscar. I think that's, that's one the of the thing. great this, this, travesties of the Academy well, if, Awards that he wasn't nominated that, well, yeah, that performance. Because everybody well, think about it. then were buzzing about his performance in this movie. Well, here's a tough... I mean, was like all over. Like He was like, I heard so many people... You know, yeah. talking about it, and he reevaluated like you know his the movie after hearing all that, and yeah, it's a tough list though. If you look at the list of the guys that were nominated, like who are you taking off that list? I mean, they were all good performances, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, there was Ray one, Fiennes, I Tommy Lee Jones, Leonardo DiCaprio, Pete Posowate, and John Malkovich. I mean, those are yeah. What was DiCaprio yeah. for? What's eating Gilbert Grape? Yeah, take yeah. him off. Maybe You're off that one. one. Yeah, I yeah. would take him off. You're that too one. young. Take, right. take him off that. I, I, gonna, I had a feeling you were going with, with Leo off. He's going to he's going he was going to win. He was going to win for the Departed anyway. Kilmer. <laughs> now that we know what we know, we can make that. We can make that swap. That that it wasn't the real year yeah. anyway. <laughs> that you put your slot Kilmer right in there. It's a great performance, <laughs> least, though. I, have to I, was, say. I, get, I would almost get him nominated. Who won that year? Was it was it Malkovich? It, no, it was Tommy Lee Jones. Tommy Lee Jones. Yeah, this is better than yeah. Tommy Lee Jones in that. Um, I I I, I dare say. Dr. Richard Kimball. No, but that, <laughs> as much that, as I love the Fugitive. Uh, that was a Kilmer powerhouse performance. Was performance. Much yes. better he he that stole year. that movie. I think that's a strong yeah. year. It's a, it's a tough. That one. was a strong year, but that was a career win. Also, that yeah. that was a career award for Tommy Lee Jones. Just yeah, for right. kind of sticking sticking yeah. through it. But but I'm not saying he didn't deserve it. But Kilmer, yeah, uh, I think should you know. And now with the expanded category, right? Don't, don't they expand the nominees? He could have he could have easily been. That's there. only for yeah. the best picture, yeah. though. They, they you know, and the then five, the unsung yeah. hero is, I think, is is very overshadowed. Obviously, is Kurt Russell. He was, uh, he was good. You know, he's got the thankless job of being like the straight but conflicted hero. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's so good in this. Like, and and before this, he had done Captain Ron, so he was kind of like floundering <laughs> and, and not yeah. really kind of. You know, he hadn't really had his. This was kind of like the beginning of his second coming. Was that Captain Ron? You know, wasn't 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 overboard early nineties too with overboard uh, Captain Ron? So yeah. Yeah. trouble, little China. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. a good one though. That's a, that's a good one. Watch Chop Carpenter. Express is always I, running. Well, yeah. anything he does with Carpenter is, is yeah. that's, that's gold. Yeah, right there. I mean, but, that's why uh, he started his career with all those Disney movies. So that was that's right. the first run. The computer then war then tennis the shoes. Carpenter stuff with you know Escape from New York and yep. oh, the so thing. this is probably like his third third peak. How many actors have that many? Opportunity. Yeah, because he mean, started young. Great. He was yeah. he actually he actually uh uh played with Elvis. He was in it happened at the that's World's right. Fair with Elvis that's Presley, right. stepped on his foot. Um and then he went like on the, to play Elvis and that's that right. made for yeah. TV movie that that Carpenter. And directed. then he did the he, he did the voice of Elvis for Forrest Gump for Robert yeah. Zemeckis. That's right. Yeah. It isn't Val <laughs> Kilmer, the Elvis, Elvis in, uh, in, in uh, True Romance, yeah. A lot yeah. of connections here. So <laughs> so yeah, I, I, you know, I think Kurt Russell really uh you know plays that uh, he plays it well. This this guy who just kind of 
it, it's I think he's deluding himself at this point. Like he just thinks that he can walk away from this stuff, you know, and his and his brothers are trying to like tell him like we, you know, we, you can't just come in here and let things happen around you if you're a man of conscience. Cause that right. it turns out that's what really uh Virgil was. He's like, you know, well, someone's got, you know, we can't just walk around here right making all this money and, and the cowboys are just running roughshod over everything. Mm -hmm. You know, and and uh, Kurt Russell is, is just seems to almost seems to be in a daze throughout, like in the beginning of the film, he's right. kind of like, Oh, I don't want to get involved or what should we do? What do I do? Um, you know, and it seems like, like Virgil seemed to have more of the moral compass at this oh, point. He just wants to be, he just wants a normal life. He just, he's thinking he's doing right by his family, taking him there. But what I had a problem with, I, I guess, and this is another nitpick a little bit, but is the fact that, at at some point in the film, you know, yeah, it takes everybody there, but Virgil's the one that everybody seems to turn on Kurt Russell, right? It's like everybody's like blaming him for this situation, and right, and he he after tried to warn them. after the shooting. Yeah, he tried to warn them, like he, you know, look, let's not get involved, you know, whatever. We're here to you know, make money and live our lives, and and this and that, and and Virgil, yeah, like it's surprising to me that Virgil wouldn't know this. Of of him like like what the, what the hell kind of town is this like he didn't know that, right what Tombstone was all about <laughs> like you know he's been he was a lawman at one point too in his career he got liquor hostesses all up and yeah, down like Allen Street didn't, like he didn't know like it's like he's so naive it seems like in that in that and then yeah. you know like all of a sudden he's this big moral uh, guy and it's like he should have known you know this was the situation so I yeah I had a little bit of a issue with yeah, that. I mean, but, it might have, he might have portrayed it as a boom camp and, and it's yeah. up and coming and it doesn't have these types of problems. So we can kind of get here to us. It's yeah. not like Dodge city where it's this big town and big city. They can go already to corrupt. And, and, already, yeah, kind of yeah. like, kind of like when people start first started going to Florida, it was like, there wasn't a lot of people there. And, and things, were <laughs> yeah. cheap, right? things were cheap and you can get stuff. And, yeah. and I think that's what tombstone was, is it was this small town. It was a mining camp. So we can go mm -hmm. there, make some money and, and fly under the radar. And obviously that, that you know, violence, you know, that was what was always fascinating about the old, about the West for me was, you know, America was coming of age, and on the East you had some semblance of law and order and and kind of society, mm -hmm. but then the other half of the country was just un, un like even lawmen, you know, Wyatt Earp ran prostitutes in, yep. in you know in parts of his life was a preacher, you know, did all these different things. So there's there's not blacks and whites, there's just all different shades of grays. Yeah, yeah. Which of course is depicted in Costner's version. I think he goes through that whole, that whole story there of him, yeah, you know, of drinking and, so and it's almost as if person. you know when you meet Kurt Russell, it's like almost like the, it's like the sequel or something. Like it, it's like we get to this point in Tombstone where Costner could have taken that part of his life, and, and this movie could have been just the just the, picked up from it, picked up from there exactly, because you already know that he's that he's been through all that, and maybe that's why. He's not, he's, he's, uh, kind of, you know, desensitized to the whole, like the corruption, right. He, you know, but he, but he's just trying to like work his way through. I'm going to make some money. Mm -hmm. I want to do what I want to do. And we're going to all going to get rich and we're all going to live high on the hog because we deserve it, you know, yep. kind of thing, kind of attitude. Yeah. So, uh, but, uh, yeah, it's surprising that, that Virgil always thought, I always thought, cause he's the older brother and it's like, he, you know, he would, that he would take that stance of yeah. him being you know, the moral guy when, you know, should have been Wyatt the whole time. It's, 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 yeah. a, it's, why it, it, why it was just in, in denial about it. Now, yeah. Sean and Nick, I have a question for you as actors, which, okay. which one of these, which one of these roles would you want to tackle? If I was giving the script, I yeah. would have probably taken Wyatt Earp because it's like, yeah. you think so? he, he has a lot of scenes and, and he's very, but the way, I think give Kilmer credit then for taking that and making those scenes really overshadow everything else. Cause that's what you remember. You remember all those wonderful scenes with Doc Holliday. Yeah. Uh, so you would have taken, you would have taken, you would have taken the wider brawl. That's the star. And, and yeah. I, th I think, you know, you, you can't really say that, um, Wyatt Earp doesn't have his moments because beginning to end, he has some great scenes. He has great lines, you know. Oh, right. the, the, sh um, the showdown after, oh, after so Fred many. White got shot, right? Yeah. With with, uh, uh, with Powers Booth. Right. Right. When when he faces down uh, Ike Clanton and everybody and, you know, not mm -hmm. before I make your head into a canoe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, a lot, a lot of, a lot of tension there, right? A, a lot of, a lot of like these events that happen are, are tension building. So Sean, which one? Who are you going to pick? You're going to pick. Uh, you're going to pick Doc. I'm, I'm going with Doc. Yeah. Going with Doc. Yeah. I'm going with Doc. I think. Uh, it seems like it's the most fun. It's the most fun. Yeah. 
Like uh, right. Nick and I did Romeo and Juliet. I got to play Mercutio. And that's the part I wanted to play. I don't want to play Romeo. I want to play the, the guy who can, you know, mm-hmm. shake things up a bit. That's that's yeah. what I like to do. I, I might have selected Curly Bill because he was he was like the, was the Kilmer version of, of like the, the cowboy version of that. He got to have like the most fun with his, uh, you know, devil may care attitude and just like, you know, do, doesn't really care about stuff. Just kind of and you would never know that he was like a killer or, or the leader of this, this band of like smiling. Uh, and yes. Laughing. Yeah. But yeah. he's a killer at heart. He's such right? a, oh my god, he's such a yeah. wise ass. Yeah, <laughs> you know, he's you know. when so, he kills you know, the marshal. I think that there's that moment of clarity yes. when like the, the drugs are kind of like faded, and he's like, "Oh my god, I killed yeah. this guy." Yeah, and yeah. I think that was great too. But then you see him at the end when he's taken away, he's still laughing. Of course, he's laughing. He's he's out of it. You know? He's on he's but, on his opium. Yeah. And the great thing about Tombstone is mo- most of this is factually correct. Yes, like there there are very few liberties taken with it. Uh, which which is great because I I got on a kick after this. I read a, a you know autobiography or biography of Wyatt Earp. I read about Doc Holliday, da da da, and all you know it's very compelling stuff, um, and and it's and it's pretty pretty true to to what happened there, which I which I really enjoy about this as well. It's not like a you know they have something that really happened and then they felt the need to take liberties with it. It was like this this story was compelling enough compelling about this enough. conflict, mm-hmm. um, and and if this okay gunfight at the OK Corral. I think you know. Sean, maybe you can correct me if you know. Um, it's probably one of the single most pivotal pivotal events in the Old West. Not, you know, we we know about Billy the Kid and Jesse James and, and people of the Old West, but as far as actual like events that happened in the Wild West or the Old West, this seems to be like the standout event. Yeah, that happened. That people talk about the gunfight at the OK Corral, and that you never hear about any other event. You hear about people and characters from the West, but. Yeah, it's and it was like you said, it was very quick, and and I believe only two two or three people were actually killed. It's amazing. Wyatt Earp was the only person who to not get shot in mm-hmm. that in that shootout, and they say that that it was not actually at the corral, but in a vacant lot next to the corral. And they do say that in Tombstone. They say something yeah. about they're in that lot next to the. And I caught that. I'm like, oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah. They definitely go for the accuracy. Um, yeah, and then and then the, the the other amazing true part of that story is uh, when they have the final face off with Curly Bill. Um, he never got shot there either, and that was historically accurate. People were there, and and they he he got shot in his boot, like his boot, the heel of his boot got shot, his saddle got shot, and his coat got shot. But he never he never got shot throughout all that. So. I love um, Doc Holliday. I guess that's where Morgan was right. If you're the one on water after that, you yeah. know, when he gets yeah, that's that, that's you know, where is he <laughs> out there walking on no. water? <laughs> yeah. You're talking about the no, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 no, okay. no. <laughs> and, yeah. And, and it's like the, the slow motion rays of the shotgun, and meanwhile, Curly Bill's like already like has his, you know, yeah. it's like no, yeah. The one thing about <laughs> historically, right, the the gunfight at the OK Corral was. We don't know what really happened except the folks that were there, right? Right. Because like, there was this big yeah. trial afterwards and people mm-hmm. were like, they didn't look at the Earps as heroes, a lot of people. No. They were like, they thought they went there and just shot them, you know, because, you know. Yeah, cold-blooded the, the Cowboys were saying, we, we raised our hands. We, we, you know, we were, you know. But um, so I, the way they shot it, they obviously took the stance that, you know, it, they, they were justified in doing it. But there's that little wink, right, that. Doc Holiday gives them before, it, and, and you know, so it was like, yeah, it's such a great you see, you see, them, Did that, you know, so I, yeah, I like how they see, balanced it a little bit. You see Thomas Hayden Church's face drop, mm. and it's and that and and Wyatt Earp was able to read that. He's like, oh my god, like that, well, that he, line, he like it, was it wasn't happening. about who's gonna draw first, he was able to read people, and he knew that at that point, there's no turning back. He was right? he was past the point of no return. Yep. Um, and then, and then Doc Holliday just lit him up. I mean, they, they put so many bullets into him that he, oh, when he fell into the hay, <laughs> wow. You know, yeah. and just like, yeah. uh, that was one of the things though of, of Kilmer, like, you know, shot like 18 bullets out of two, six, six shooters, but you know, yeah. that's like, <laughs> well, the ca- that's like cl- well, it's that classic, <laughs> you know, that, yeah. that classic thing. They had to throw that in there. C- Cagneyism you know? of the bull of the gun that never runs out. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just, uh, you know, and, and getting back to the cast, you know, there, there's so many great performances as well. It's it's easy to talk about. We could spend a, a, probably a show talking just about Kilmer, but you had Michael Bean as Johnny Ringo. Awesome. Uh, you know, again, very, very, who, a very under and, and like Eric's. Uh, who I would have liked. Gripe, gripe is, 
These people nice. were underused, but but when you've got people like that's not a bad problem to have. If you've got a, a, yeah. a, a cast like this, you're you're probably getting the best out of them, and they're not on on long enough to really wear out their welcome. So every every scene that Michael Bean is in is really impactful. He really gives it like his all, mm. and and at the yeah. time he was he wasn't a lead actor, but he was he was much more than than what this was, which is kind of like a glorified cameo. Yeah, I mean the the references, and it's interesting to note that there's a lot of biblical references in this film. You know, even even then, when, when, like when he says, "Oh, he's walking on water," that's it's it's meant to be callous, but it's just but it, that ongoing thing. And then yeah. Ringo is constantly quoting the Bible, and he knows the Bible chapter and verse, and and of course the Latin. Uh, yeah. yeah, that would have been that would for me that would have been a great part to play that ain't you know, what he just, said at all you wretch so so cold and so <laughs> the very and when he shoots the priest in the head yeah and he's just so cold about it and he's just you know he's not you know he's, he doesn't take any pleasure from it and at the whole uh, when they describe his character you know when they say that you know he he wants revenge for being born for being born that that gives you chills mm. that's like man this is a yeah you know, or 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 when they're in the when they're in the saloon or you know watching yeah. the show right and they're talking about the deal with the devil and and Curly yeah. bill's like hey would you take that you know would you I do that or whatever it. and he's like i already I already done it i already done it you know so he's they're already a person shot. that yeah. oh. that again much like much like doc holiday <laughs> understands their frailties and understands what they are i mean i think he yeah. understands that he's some type of a monster um but that's what he's gonna be and that that's you know, what, the, what kind of what he's destined to be. The beautiful thing um, about Holiday is that he uses that against them too. He knows this about people, but he, he can't help himself, but just throw that out there. Oh yeah. He can't stop and poking. It's almost poking like slapping him in the face. Like Kurt Russell physically does it, yeah. but yeah. he does it verbally to these guys. It's just, yeah. he knows it's going to get a rise out yeah, of him. B- Billy Bob Thornton yeah. gets the receiving end of uh <laughs> skin, that breeze. smoke wagon and go to work. I well, love, the, I love the term and not like smoke wagon. You just picture like a, a, a gun and, and firing and smoke, you know, like, like such glamorous wordplay, you like skin that smoke wagon and go to work. Well, not only him, but that poor bastard, at the, you know, and when, then the horse. when he's pulling the horse uh. off the train and he's just like, you don't even see the guy's face. He's, you know, cause he's shot from behind. <laughs> hurts, don't and it? It just hurts. And it just takes the, the rope, the knot and the rope and just hits him. Uh. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of slapping going on to too. Because that, I- that, that Wyatt Earp doesn't take any shit. He's no pushover. I mean, he's a yeah. tough guy, you know, like tough but as nails. He, but, you know? he, but he kind of wants to keep that, that kind of tucked in. But yeah, when it yeah. comes down to it, like, like right. with Johnny Tyler or, um, we got to talk about Stephen Lang. Oh yeah. Like Clanton. The guy is perpetually drunk through this film. He had probably the, <laughs> the like yeah. the hardest thing to, the hardest, nice pro- but one of the hardest roles probably to stay as grimy as he did consistently, just to always look like he just rolled out of like a tumbleweed. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, and always in like a state of like glassy eyed, yeah, like, his eyes were like, always like red. Or, yeah. or, yeah. or hung over. He always had like a look of just like this guy's like on a permanent bender. Um, mm-hmm. and kudos, such a, such a, you know, a balancing act of cowardice and then yep. and like bravado, like after yeah. the fact. Um, and you, and you grow to like love to hate him. It's like, oh my God, like how does he, how does he, how does he not, how does somebody just not shoot him? Right. Just on principle. Of of being a coward, you know, I was like, uh, you know, during during the, the showdown with with uh, with Wyatt Earp, he's like, no, no, you know, he'll kill me, he'll kill me, <laughs> and then and then once and then once all that you know kind of subsides, he goes, I'll see you soon. Yeah, like he's already making threat. You, you, right. Like he could that didn't stop him. I'll, so I'll see many moments soon. where where Kurt Russell could have killed him, right? Yeah, so many, he lets him go every, oh, every time. Such a right, such a time. weasel. He's, right. Get in the fight or get away. Right. Yeah. He's, there's oh. honor in this fight. So th- he's yeah. maintaining that honor, but he's, he's probably the first person that should go, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just for being a coward. Cause they should have just been and- shot back in the day for being a coward. Right. I mean, yeah. that was a thing. And he's the guy so, that makes yeah. it for the time being, you know, like he's the one yeah. guy that gets away, but then he gets shot two years later, but you, you mm-hmm. wanted yeah. to see him get his come up and so oh. you don't, you don't get it. Mm. And he throws his sash away, yeah. and that like, like yeah. for me, I was like, "That's not going to release you." That's, that's a cop out. I'm going yeah. to take a, I'm going to take a free <laughs> shot since we're out in the out, in the, out on the open range. Who's going to know? You just take a take right? a pot shot. You yeah, might right him. right in the back of the head, man. That's <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't have hurt, you know. And then and then at the, that that iconic scene at the at the train station, right when they go to kill everybody, they're going to kill no. Virgil, uh, and and, and yeah. Ike is there too on the receiving end of the spur to the face. Well, you know, he throws please, himself please, down. Don't, yeah. Yeah, don't kill me, Wyatt. Don't kill me. God, he's all he does is beg and and you know, uh, God, yeah. you know. So yeah. he's such so he was such a great 
He's just such a great actor. And then the other, another scene I love with him is, is in the bar after the, after that comment about the spelling contest, uh, Sam Elliott is there. Right. And he's like, I'll cut your pimps heart out. A, a great piece of acting from Sam Elliott at that point. Cause he really looks, he's like, he's actually angry at him. He's like, I'll cut your pimp. He's like, don't threaten me. You son of a bitch. Like yeah. real, like really getting like, uh, like a lot of great performances. So all you got all these pros, yeah. Just like working yeah. together, even in small roles, it, it just makes this move. It just brings it to another level of you got play. You got players at, at every level of this game. There's not a bad role in this movie. Like I'd play anything. Like when you ask, like, what would you play? Like just to be a part of that and the, mm-hmm. the ensemble, the like every scene is great. Like it, it, you could see everybody's putting a thousand percent into those performances yeah. and there's not a weak link in that entire movie. I mean, I mean, and even, what, even Jason thing, right? Like I'm about sorry. how yeah. some of these roles, maybe these actors maybe were underutilized. Like Bert, uh, I was going to say Burt Lancaster, but Charlton <laughs> Heston, you know, um, Jason Priestley, they're small roles, but even they have like interesting lines. Even they are rem- memorable. I think afterwards. Yeah. I'd love to have seen more. Of, I was know, just Bert about to role. say that they, they, they do have their moments, yep. you know, like J- even Jason Priestley probably jumped at the chance to play the, yeah. The so the quote unquote sensitive guy, right? Like just, the you know sister the guy, boy, you know, the, the sis, yeah, like sister <laughs> boy, Billy Nilly, you know. Uh, but he was probably like, and and he was really he's like the sex symbol, right? The young sex symbol of the day at and, the time, yeah. And he's playing this, and he probably loved love the fact that he was playing that role. So that he yeah. probably you know, yeah, you, you got yeah. Billy Z- you got Billy, Billy Zane with the Billy same, Zane. same Crispin's yep. Day speech, yeah. Like all, you know, it's Fabian. Like everybody, there's there's room like. I mean, I, that was, I think that was, I, I was reading reviews and, and actually somebody put, put that as a negative. They're like, there's so many characters here that nobody's got time. Nah, they're, they're, I just thought it, it, it filled in everything. Like you got, you got a fully realized world it's, it's with all these the colorful building. different yeah. characters in it yeah. that, yeah, they're, they're coming and going. You don't need to memorize every name. It, it's, you know, there, a lot of them are in, the, in a lot of different scenes in the background anyway. So they're just kind of filling out this, this world, you know, which I really love that. Yeah. As an actor, you look at these bit roles and each one of them would have been like the lead in your reel that you put together of all yeah. your parts to show. Like Frank Stallone is, was probably like, you know, putting out, <laughs> here's, yeah. here's my best performance of all time, you know. <laughs> get, get knifed by the exactly. kidney. Yeah. A bl- oh, blade man. right to the liver. Yeah. And you don't even recognize him too, right? Because he's, yeah. He's got a mustache. Just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he's yeah. got that. But he had the he got the drawl down though he got the, the oh. accent or whatever. Full disclosure, I watched the Frank Stallone documentary on Amazon, and that's when I was like, "Oh, that's Frank Stallone!" And it, <laughs> wait, I didn't wait, know wait. it at the time. Hang on, hang on, <laughs> Sean. Hang on. Okay. There, there's a documentary <laughs> about yes, Frank there Stallone. Is. Yes, yes, and you have is. to watch it. It's good. There's, if there, okay. I when, haven't when, watched when it is, yet, but when I've is, been meaning to. When is Nick's documentary coming then? Because if they're going to make, like, like, oh, oh, do we get in line to get a documentary? Because if they're down to Frank Stallone, we can't be far behind. Hey. Nothing, against, nothing against Frank. You know, nothing against Frank, but his, I think, you know. His career actually got started to get off the ground before his brother. He was in music. Yeah. But yeah, no, it, it, it's, it's a good documentary. It really is. And it's well done. I think you'll enjoy it. <laughs> Is, it, is it available? Is it available on streaming? It's on Amazon. Okay, I believe. Does he do, oh, no, does he do, a, does he do a, another? Uh, does he like re revisit? Uh, do 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 do. Yes, yeah. of course yeah. he does. Of course. And, and what go. did he sing? Far, far, <laughs> far from over. over. That, far uh, far yeah. from over. Yeah, I think that was Grammy nominated or Oscar God. nominated. One of the two. It was how, how do we? How do we know this much about Frank Stallone? <laughs> Because I watched the documentary. About but, yeah, but you, you, okay, you, you, have an, you have an advantage, but how do we... Uh, the, the side Dean, I have thing. to say, I'm shocked that you didn't know there was a documentary about Frank Stallone. I'm a little shocked. I'm surprised I, as well. You can, I am... Uh, you, I am surprised this that there is, is first one. that I know this and you do. I'm shocked. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not surprised that I don't know. I'm surprised that there is one. Okay. <laughs> that's what's, that's what's surprising is that there actually is one, but all right, well, good, good on him. Uh, you know, just, uh, yeah, I, I can't do, you know, this one thing I noticed about the cast, I did notice this weird connection though. Mm-hmm. The, and let's see if you could pick out the James Cameron connection. Oh yeah. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not that easy. Okay. Sean, you want to take a crack at the James Cameron connection? Go ahead. Well, Titanic. What? Well, you got Bill Paxton and Billy Billy Zane in Titanic. Okay. Okay. Um, 
Uh, is there more? Let me see. Oh, yeah. No, wait. Yeah. There's, there's got to be it, several films or just that film? Several. No, it's, several. It's, it's oh, several James, films. It's the James, James Cameron Connection. Connection. Um, yeah, so I didn't say I didn't say a, a single. Oh yeah, the Terminator, Michael Bean and Bill Paxton. Okay, um, and Michael Bean was in the Abyss. <clears throat> but, yep. Okay. One more. Yep. One more. One more. You got one more. Nick, you want to you want to take a crack at the final one? Never crossed my mind. So, <laughs> <laughs> Eric, there's one more. <sighs> Different film or actor? What do you mean? Is it, Act, is it are we talking about another actor? Yeah, we're talking about another James actor. James Cameron film. We're talking uh, about another actor. Oh, goodness. Um, Stephen Lang was in Avatar. I, yes, he was. I didn't see Avatar. Darn it. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Oh, Stephen okay. Lang was in Avatar. And I can't believe that's the same guy. Yeah. Honestly. Oh, it doesn't look anything like it. Right. So there, there's so four actors, oddly enough, in this film worked with before or would go on to work with James Cameron. I don't know what that means, if it means anything, but I just I've got useless information. But you know that makes up for the Frank Stallone. No, it's, it's I, cool I think I just kind of made up for the Frank Stallone thing. There you go. Uh, quite easily, quite <laughs> handily go. with this. You know, Dean had to come up with something. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it, it, in talking about this film, it came out in '93. Um, and, and I keep th- I think about it a lot when when I think about films and I think about the current state of films and just you know I don't know. I, I'll put the question out there: what is was the '90s? Uh, you know, I keep saying it like was it the second golden age of film? Let's see if he comes back. Nope. <laughs> wow. Okay. Nick, were the 90s the second eight golden age of film? What do you think? I wouldn't you say. You were shaking your head no. I was, you were shaking your head Because no. I would not say it's the second golden age. There's been a – movies have been around for 100 years. The 30s were excellent. 50s had some great movies. The 60s were probably the second golden age, probably. You think so? And then the 70s had some great films. I love the 80s, so I would lump a lot of great movies from the 80s. The 90s were excellent, but to say it was maybe like the second golden age, I don't know. I mean, that's saying Sean, a lot. How about the last golden age? Okay. I would go that far. Yeah, I would I would say the last okay. golden I'll age. Buy, I'll buy the last golden that's, that, that's, that's yeah. good. Because, because I think there was just a time, you know, the 90s were still that time where you had big budget epic films uh-huh. that you really don't see anymore. Um, you had you had comedies, but you still had, you know, Hoffman, Nicholson, De Niro, Pacino doing really quality work, like probably the last best work of, of their careers in that right. time. But the, And then you had that second class coming up of, you know, of Brad Pitt, Edward Norton. Uh, Affleck and, and Matt Damon and, and Christian Bale. And, and, you know, I think you just had this fertile ground for, you know, and, and you had, you know, a lot of independent films being made, but they would catch on and be popular. Mm-hmm. You know, whereas nowadays, because of streaming, everything is so fragmented that you don't know what to watch. Right? Yeah. You don't, you know, you, you might miss something because it's on like Hulu and you might not think, oh, it's not a, it's not a big film. But back in the nineties was like that last era of, Go into the movies yeah, right. for this kind of stuff because yep. before everything kind of exploded into into fragmentation, and that's maybe why, like I think that of the, of the '90s as like that. It, it, Sean put it better, like that last era, that mm-hmm. last yep. era of film. I, I buy that. That's absolutely correct. You buy that? Yeah, I think so. Because I buy that for years. a dollar. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> did you did uh, Nick? Did you see this in the theater? I didn't. That's, I did. That's where I think oh, the you whole did, cult thing came yeah. from. You know, it's like. Oh. I did not see it in the theater. Okay. Um, okay. Did you like it the first time you saw it? Yeah, I yeah. did. It's it's the kind of movie where it's over two hours, I believe. Yes. yes. It doesn't feel yeah. it. No. It feels like a 90-minute movie. Yes. Scene after scene. And that's why I think a lot of people were buzzing about the uh, the Kevin Costner version at the time, right? And people were like, that's going to be the big hit. That's going to be the epic. And that feels like a three hour, five <laughs> well, hour, it is. you know? Yeah. It, that, it's definitely, that, it's de- it, that you know? is definitely the, 
the Lawrence of Arabia version yeah. of the of the of the Wyatt Earp story. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Wyatt Earp is in the Costner version definitely played as more of a sour person, very very much jaded, very almost mm-hmm. unlikable in, in a lot of in a lot of aspects. Um, but the fragments of of the of the film are the same. Now, what about let's let's talk about? I think we need to talk about the portrayal of women in this because mm-hmm. um, you've got one female character that really was kind of. You know, even for the time, and and, and Josephine Marcus, who who would become Wyatt Earp's wife, was was all those things at that time. Again, very true to her character, but at that time, that was unheard of for a woman to be as forward or as quote unquote modern thinking. Uh, you know, at the time, because you saw the other wives were kind of more right. You know, homebody. They went home. They did this, and and they were kind of you know. And then Wyatt's wife was just. I totally know. out of it. I yeah, his, historically, I mean, was it his? Because I know he was married to somebody who wife. died. So yeah, his, his common law wife, right? Sh- I was up. a little disturbed. You know, I remember the first time seeing it. I'm like, you have a wife who's kind of not all there. Has some issues with the, you know, the dependency on 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 that opium drug, whatever yeah. it was. Laudanum. Right? Yeah, and uh, which they still make, believe it or not. Yeah, and and so he was being tempted by this, you know, actress and. Uh, I, I, you know, the chemistry was great. Dana Delaney and, and mm-hmm. you know, Russell really, I, I thought that worked really great. Um, but if you didn't know it at the very end of the movie, you're like, okay, he left his wife and went, but then you, you hear that she died right after, you know, and that's when he, he was like, okay, I'm going to go pursue my bliss and follow Doc advice on his deathbed you know and yeah so i thought that was I, I think i think men were you know i think whole, the whole nature of relationships was a little more loosey-goosey back then as well again yeah. again especially because uh in the beginning there's a there's a, a kind of a an allusion to that where when when they're all meeting each other's wives and it's like oh where'd you find where'd you find her oh the same place you found yours like because they were all probably prostitutes uh, white, or, or wife hostesses prostitute yeah yeah yeah, yeah, Virgil's definitely was a, a hostess, mm-hmm. we'll say. Um they made and, honest and it, women out of them, I guess, right? <laughs> or attempt well attempted to attempted to. Um which was interesting, mm-hmm. you know, and, and it seemed because they, they were in that life, right? They were mm-hmm. ru- they were running bars, they were running saloons, and again, you know, they were running prostitutes as well, also being lawmen. So again, that like I said earlier, that whole gray area of these guys aren't aren't exactly the, the moral standard as well. Well, you know, and I in any of those settlements, it's always the men that go out there first and then the women come. So like women are at a premium. So when you, you know, so the women you're going to come in contact with are the women that are working for you in those uh, establishments. And if you're running a brothel. Well. And the scene where Virgil, I think in the movie decides, okay, I have to do something. I have to take up the badge was when he saves that little kid from getting run over, yes. gives it to his mom or whatever. And she has a scar on her face. Yes. He sees that. And he's like, okay, is this really a place where you want to raise a family? I have to mm. do something. If this is what we're going to do, if we're going to try to, yeah. This or, or what's my part, what's my part in this? or something. Yeah. So, yeah. Cause that, that's what he, you know, uh, he said that when they're playing pool, like I have to look these people in the face, like, you know, it's like, I'm like, they're slapping me in the face because he's starting to develop that, uh, I guess unexpected conscious because in the beginning they were all like, yeah, you know, we're in the mining business now, we're you know, own a saloon and happy go lucky, and then and then reality starts to set in, and I think yeah. that was one of the one of the points of that is that these guys can't get away from they're trying to like, do that a stuff. Show, uh, it's gonna and they're them. shooting at the performers and they're yeah. shooting their guns. <laughs> Who knows who's on the second floor getting yeah. hit by those bullets? I mean, it's like but, but that kind of that was indicative, was like, Nick. That was that oh, was yeah. a very indicative scene though because. It's not like they stood up and said, "Oh, don't you can't do that." And you know, like they were just kind of like live and let live. Like that was of course, at that yeah. point. Like all those interactions with the Cowboys, that that scene with the, you know, where with Johnny Ringo, it was all about de-escalation. It's like, okay, you know, winner to the king. Like he's like, I'm, yes. I'm you know, I'm not here for this. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to you want to try and bully me or or do no, whatever. I'm I'm not in it. But you know, those forces, you know, shooting shoot the shooting of of the of the marshal or the sheriff drags him in you know at that point now he's got to act because now it's like now there's the moral the moral right has been kind of wronged right as it were and that that then compels him into action and then that just starts the the events just kind of spiral after that it's like that one thing that happens that he makes the decision to involve himself in kind of set sets all these other things in motion for him that's right and 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 you know the whole you know the the next scene with that, and then there's the scene in the bar with the with the spelling bee, and 
him getting drunk and in jail and everything just kind of gets so quickly how it could get out of control. And that was, that's what I love about it. It's just a, this the buildup of, of this tension, you know, and then finally released in like this really extreme act of violence. But then there's the retribution, which we, I think we need to talk about as well is, you know, like we said, the, the okay corral itself was just, a, it was, it was the scene that everybody knows, but it really, there was still like an hour worth of film left right. because it was the, the after effects of that, which, which is great. It didn't end on that. And it, you know, it could have ended on that and like, Oh, these guys were heroes. Like you, it could have like positioned it that way, but there was still this, what, you know, what happens afterwards, you know? Cause again, like you said, it was kind of ambiguous as many people were against the Earps as, as were for the Cowboys, you know? Um, and the marshal, and, and, the sheriff says, you know, he's like, he, he says to him, I don't think I'll let you rest me today. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. Yeah, and he was as corrupt as as yeah. as they come, right? He was he was definitely on the side of the cowboys, right? He said, "Oh, you know, tonight there'll be one man running Tombstone, and, and you'll be happy to know him because he knew that that was coming. That that the yep. cowboys were going to clean him out, and this way that kind of meets uh, meets his ends as well." Yeah, and then um, in the movie, you know, he after um, Morgan's dead, and he they're, they're dry, you know riding the corpse down the road. He's like, "It's over," he, like he you know because you hear about all these blood feuds in the old west, and you know, um, so he was like, "That's it, no more," you know. Um, mm-hmm. But of course, th- there's more, and that's when it's fine. Like, okay, you you want hell? We're, we're gonna give it to you, right? Yep. So it's like you call down the thunder, you got it. <laughs> and that <laughs> and historically, that lasted what, like two years or something? They were hunting down yeah, anybody that, that had extended... a red stash, and, yeah. and it was brutal. Yep. That's where the morality comes into play. Like, okay, yeah, you know, they killed your brothers, and uh, you know, one of them now has a, a lame arm, and you know, that that was cold-blooded but you know justified right because the, the cowboys were doing some bad things but well that was it, frontier it, justice right it was kind of you know eye for an eye yeah but that's where you before know, they, we get they to, the, those, to the hunt the badges right to protect yeah them. so like okay of just, course just, yeah just, I'll, I'll deputize you, you i'll deputize you i'll de- you know everybody's a deputy and you, you know and then you can just go out and, a red sash. and go do what you want um there's one gaff. oh it it just bothers me and I, I i hesitate to point it out to you guys if you don't know it because then when you watch it, you're always going to see it and oh you're going to be taken out of the film. You got to give it to me now. No, I got to hear it. it. I have to hear it now. It's not like a, okay. a soda can. So, after, so Morgan gets shot in the back, right? He's laying on the pool table. Yeah. There's, there's two parts, right? So so Morgan passes away um, and there's a scene where, where Wyatt turns around and his, his hands are all bloody. Yes. Right? In, in the scene before that, there's almost no blood on his hands. Okay, I can live with that. That's a right. continuity thing. Then he goes outside and it's like raining. Right. And he's like, no, get away, get away. You know, um, and they have this wide shot. You could see the line of where they're not po- shooting the rain sprinkler. <laughs> I never so know. There's rain maybe 30 feet behind now them. And then just the rain stops. Like oh, they, boy. Didn't, they had a wide shot, but didn't do the rain all the way. So it's like, it's only raining in this circle. <laughs> <laughs> But like in and theater, like, I, I, I noticed it from like the jump for thirty years or however long in this movie. I'm like, oh my god, if, I've never noticed. If our eyes, Lucas in there to fix it. Yeah, if our eyes stray away, then the actors aren't doing their job. And I've seen this movie a few times, so it's like I'm captivated by him just wiping the blood in this white shirt. Yeah, sitting out there in the rain and like you know, because uh, I think it was more me. Died. I think it was me just more now taking in the whole the thing and, and then realizing like there's no rain back there. <laughs> It's like dry and you can see that you could see the line oh, no. of where the rain is. I'm like, man, you dropped it. Like we, we were you going to go ask out. for your money back, Dean. No, I was okay. just going to be like, you know, just why can't you just reshoot it? Well, yeah. Free popcorn. You know, but you mentioned, <laughs> you know, James Cameron earlier. There are uh-huh. moments in his movies where he does things like that, where it's like what the motorcycles are kind of going through. And you could tell it's the fifth take because you could see before they, the motorcycle gets there that the tire marks on the road. Yeah. And it's like <laughs> that always kills me because I'm like, dude, why, why, why would you do that? Did Reset you the whole thing. That? You know, and it happened Reset in the whole Lies. Thing. It happened in Terminator 2. <laughs> like he does. Maybe that that's his time. thing. <laughs> no. Yeah, that could be, you know, he, he wants those. He seems like a perfectionist, but he lets those gaps in. Yeah. So they... So to, to tie it up, they they do you know Wyatt Earp does get his revenge, albeit not really because he he kind of wipes out the Cowboys, but needs to sh- have a, a showdown with with Johnny Ringo. Like Johnny Ringo's after Curly Bill gets taken <sighs> over, you know, gets taken out. Uh, Johnny Ringo takes over, and his edict is, is scorched earth policy: kill kill them all. I don't care. You you know they they killed uh, 
Michael Rooker, they dragged him across the across the desert. Uh, they did him pretty dirty in, really bad. in more ways than one. Yeah. <laughs> but he betrayed and, uh, the Cowboys, right? He abandoned them. Yes, him, he did. So. Yeah. So he, he was a man ship. of conscience, right? He's like, what you know, what you what they did to the women ain't right. And that's yeah. not, you know, that's where I'll, I'll kill people, but I draw the line at hurting women. Yeah. Okay? That's still a strange moral compass there, but okay. Uh we'll take we'll take you on our team. You know, that's fine. Come on over, Sherman. Um, but then there's this final, you know, they get that little twist ending of there's there's going to be this showdown between Wyatt Earp, who's a notorious gunslinger, gunfighter versus Johnny Ringo, who's like really the expert. Um, and they play with it. You know, he's supposed to meet him at this this secluded area. And Wyatt Earp comes in, you know, in shadow. And it's Doc Holliday. Right. Love it. I'm your Huckleberry. And it's the payoff. It's the it's the payoff. You know, it's the it's the payoff we we wanted and the payoff we deserved as well. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that was the whole, yeah. you know, like, it's almost like an anti-ending because the hero, the main character does not nope. deliver the comeuppance. He actually kind of realizes his frailty um, and and is able to, uh, and knows that he can't win, but was still going to go anyway. Even if it mean that means that he was going to get killed, he ended up going anyway. Um, and Kilmer, I, I always wonder how Kilmer beat him to it, but there was that, they have that scene where, where, where Wyatt's telling everybody like, Hey, I'm not giving you any safe conduct. Like they had a little powwow before. So I'm guessing Kilmer was able to get, uh, to get in there and kind of sneak in. And, and it's I, just love, a great- I love the fact that Ringo lives a little bit to know that he got, he got it, you know, like he's, yes. able, he doesn't just fall down dead. He's alive yeah. for a little bit. And it's like, you, you kind of like the villain to kind of know, that justice has been done to him, you know? So I, yeah. And he, ba- and he backs down too. And that's the great thing about it. Right. Cause he's like, Oh, I was just funning. Right. I was just funning about it's like, why, why, if you're such a badass, why are you going to face doc holiday? Especially, you know, if he's a longer and he's half dead, even half dead, doc holiday was a formidable enemy. Right. It's kind of like, Oh, I was just fun. And I was just playing about. He's like, well, I wasn't. Yeah. You know, he's like, all right, longer. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> Great scene. let's do it you know it's like all right you know it, it's such a you know and again kilmer gets like the, the all the great scenes i guess he was just too high strung he gets all these great lines he does know? um my my hypocrisy only goes so far yeah. it's just like yeah. like so much so much great stuff that he gets to you know uh it, it's no wonder it's no wonder that he's he's fondly remembered for this role and then uh and then they have the poignant scene at the end right where um, that that actually did not happen. He did not actually visit him on his deathbed. No, but that's a great. Um, scene. But but it, I, I think it's important. I think it's an important scene, just to solidify because that in the end that's what the story was is about these two guys and and their how they have each other's back and how Holiday doesn't really have anybody and he's only got one person that he'll ever rely on. And well, can ever Kilmer said in his documentary that he viewed it as a love story between Doc yeah. and Wyatt and these two men. And that's how he played, and it and it and it works. You know, it's yeah, definitely a bromance. Definitely the bromance going. On. Yeah, and the scene at the end, you know, because you you actually get to see Doc Holiday as a person at the end. He finally, you know, when he's when he's right about to about to go off into the great beyond. Finally, you know, a, you know about about regrets he's had about a love uh, of, of his cousin and. You know, and 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 he doesn't want Wyatt to see him like this too. He goes, you know, if right. you ever cared anything about me, like leave now. Like if you did, if you're really my friend, go now. Yeah. Like you know, I don't want you to, you know, to see me like this because he, you know, I had, I had a feel. You know, when I watched it again, just you know, for this, I kind of had the feel. I never really thought about it. But I kind of had the feeling that he knew he was about to die, and was that's why he was so like, get you know, just go. Yeah. You know, because I don't want you to see me like this. You know, it's it's just kind of. And then Wyatt Earp gives him the off. book right about you know his yeah. life. Um, my friend Doc my friend Holliday, Doc, which ties in, it ties in with the Unforgiven, right? About the whole, the myths that are made about these these men, right? Yeah. It's, it's it ties it in because in the beginning of the movie, you know what happened in Dodge City and everything that happened before kind of sh- shapes up the reputation of Wyatt Earp, and and now people are yeah. going to remember the OK Corral and Doc Holliday from what's been written, you know, and and really that whole thing made the Western what it is, isn't it? Right? Absolutely. It, yeah, and this is ju- just such a classic, for just from you know top to bottom. I'm I'm glad it's getting the due. I kind of liked it when no one knew about it because then it was like a, a hidden, it was like a hidden personal thing that only a few people were into. And it's like you know back back in in like the 90s to the early 2000s, it was still kind of no one really 
you know, kind of was, was hip to it. And but I'm also happy that people are being exposed to it now. So um, as we tie up, I, you know, we, we're going to do our normal. If you can pick <laughs> a favorite scene, I don't know. I said in the beginning the whole thing, which isn't fair. But Sean, what do you think? I like, like I said, the three card playing scenes with Doc Holliday are my favorite. So if I had to rank the one of those three, I I like the one with uh, with Ike, uh, the the insults and uh, mm-hmm. the spelling contest, and uh, he's like, "Oops, yeah, yeah." <laughs> That's that's my favorite because he kind of he play he's he gets the better of him very easily. <laughs> Maybe poker's not your game. Yeah. <laughs> How about spelling content? Why Ike? Whatever do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good one. It just I wring your scrawny neck. Yeah, um, Nick, what do you, what do you got? Oh, is it man. is it another? Is this going to be all Kilmore all the time? Are we going to go for you know, a four like, or four like Kilmer? Said, it's, it, it's hard to pick because there's so many great yeah. scenes. And even, you know, Wyatt Earp has so many great scenes. But it, I think it has to be that the climax of the shootout, uh, Ringo versus, you know, Doc. I, hmm. I think probably starting from when he's lying there and kind of faking out Wyatt Earp saying, I wish I could join you, but I can't. I'm just too weak. Mm-hmm. Right. Because watching that the first time, I thought, okay, that's legit. He's just too weak. He because his pride wouldn't let him not go, right? So yeah. then you find out, no, I, you know, I'll do it. Um, and then going right up to the to the end to the deathbed scene. So, but yeah, that that moment between Ringo and and Doc that that's classic. That's just that's the movie right there. I think yeah. that one or the first one when he's in the barber chair. Um, I like that one too, but I think you know, the, the, you know, the final, the final duel. I think that was that was because that, that's where you get the first instance of I'm your Huckleberry. Yeah, that's a great scene too. That's just how, my how game. How do you pick? It's just a, a, yeah. from beginning to end, a bunch of great scenes. Awesome, Eric. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. 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 It's great. Yeah, we we should have known when because it's very out of character for Doc to say, "What's it like to wear one of those?" We should have known, mm-hmm. right? Because there's the hypocrisy, right? There's like, "What's it like to wear one of those?" Like, really? Like all of a sudden, uh, if I, I, you know what, Nick, you stole one, and Eric, you stole one. So, um, I, I love the scene uh, in the run up to the OK Corral, right? Like Eric was saying, where they're trying to figure out what to do. Uh, you know, let the you know. Once the liquor wears off, they'll, they'll, they'll lose interest. And, and Sam Elliott's, you know, Morgan, I mean, Virgil's like, no, like it doesn't make a difference. They're breaking the law. Right. So now, and that, and this is one of those scenes where it comes down to ver- what, what do we want to do versus what is right? Like, what are we supposed to do? And that, and that's where Kurt Russell was, was finally stopped pulling against it. And, and like Eric said, when, you know, when, uh, Wyatt says, you know, you don't have to mix up in this doc. And he's like, that's a hell of a thing for you to say to me. They cut back to, to Wyatt and he has like a look on his face, like almost like he he's lost. Like he doesn't know what the right answer is. He doesn't know what to do. He's trying to not get someone involved, but the, everybody else it seems to know what the answer is except for him. Right. And then he's like, you know, give, you know, give doc the street howitzer and, you know, you better swear me in. So I just love that because it's a really nice scene with the four of them kind of interacting uh all on the same page and then and then morgan's death scene is just really like that's just a it's a tough one you know because he was such a nice guy morgan right. was just like that that hero worship uh you know you're the one and and you know just the corny stuff you know i'm, I'm suffering from a hangover like that's <laughs> That, that's a, that's a Hudson and a Chet. That's a Chet yeah. thing. Like they're like, I'm suffering from a hangover. It's like, come on, like, like a little moment of levity. So like, you kind of have to like Morgan. He's like, oh, I'm reading a book about spiritualism. So they really kind of make him into a sympathetic character. And he goes through that whole, uh, you know, killing somebody and and not, and understanding that that's, it's not glamorous. You know, he thought it was a hero thing. 
So when he dies at the end and he's like, you know, you're right. You know, I can't see anything because they talked about seeing a light. Yeah, I love that part. It's just like, brought it, that whole thing like crashing down. He's like, I can't see a damn It ain't thing. true. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then he just like that death rattle of just like him like releasing his last breath and just up to there. We can leave out we can leave out the rain part that we talked about earlier, mm. uh, which happens afterwards. That we won't we'll go back into that. But that that that, that, that does it for me. Um, Nick- <laughs> bringing up one more thing. His sure. um Doc Holiday's last line, since you mentioned seeing the light, right? <laughs> What what does he say at the end? He says that's funny or something like that. Or, yeah, yeah. Well, he's looking at that's, his feet. Yeah, his that's feet, funny. Right? But I was also wondering then if that was like his death moment, and maybe he was also seeing the light. You know, like so. I, I it, it, it it didn't come to me till later, but I was wondering if that was kind of a cheesy way for them. Absolutely, because he's very observant, right? He was absolutely <laughs> so, very observant that's about funny. things. I was like, you know, so yeah, he's you know. like, oh, that's funny, and then I think he would know like that. his feet. I was kind of like why his feet because like. He is not wearing shoes, but he would know he's in bed. He's not wearing shoes. So yeah. I was wondering then if you saw the light. So I, 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 yeah, anyway. I, I think so. I think so. You know, again, it was about, re- you know, all these characters, different types of redemption arcs, you know, doc about being a better person and, you know, about his friendship and why it just figuring out what he wants. And, uh, yeah. So yeah, just a great, and it's true. It's all true. That's the great thing about this film. It's a true story. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it took place, you know, and, and oddly enough, Wyatt Earp, uh, to, to really kind of bring it into the forefront, he died in 1929. Right. He lived a long time. He saw so, movies like, made about it, you know, like, yes. Like, yeah. Like the, the weird thing about it, the only thing, the thing that really blows my mind away. And I say it to my dad a lot. I'll go to my dad. I'm like, listen, you were born six years after Wyatt Earp died. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause you want to, like, like, like that for me, that kind of like really like connects like, like these things together. Right. Yeah. It's like he, my, my dad was born in 1935. I'm like, dad, you were born six years after Wyatt Earp died. Wow. <laughs> How's that make you feel? <laughs> or am I just a rotten son? For no, no. But, but, but like when you think about historical things, they seem so far removed. Right. right? It seems like a, it, it obviously was a different time and it seems so like something mythical, <sighs> but to bring it towards someone that I know almost occupied the same time space as someone like that. Right. You know, it was absolutely like, for me, it was like, oh, wow, that was when I read that. And I'm like, oh my God, 1929. It's like, geez, you know, he, he did live, he, he did end up living a good life with, uh, with Josephine Marcus. So that's right. Um, I think that's going to do it for this episode of the 3324 podcast. Thank you to Nick Leshy. Thank you to Sean Grady. Thank you. Uh, Nick Leshy, you can find him at City of Kick. We'll put a link to his blog uh, in the show notes, City of Kick. That's K-I-K. And uh, Sean Grady is involved with a little thing called historical drama, and he does some uh, some reenactment plays, not uh, battlefield reenactments, um, but, but of uh, pivotal moments in time in history, uh, mainly surrounding the Revolutionary War. So uh, we'll drop a link in there, too. So if you're in the New York area... Um, you can come see him perform and, and really get another piece of history uh, from from the East Coast or the Eastern United States, as it were. And of course, Eric <laughs> is always with me. Me and Eric are like the standbys. We have nothing to plug but this podcast. <laughs> it's like, join, join us next week, won't you? Thanks for having, thanks for having me, guys. Absolutely. Always fun. It's, it is always a pleasure. You guys are in like the five or six timer club at this point. We're, we're, yeah. we're going to stop. We're going to stop counting. Uh, but uh, thank you everybody for, for joining us as well. Hit us up on, on social media at 3324 podcast on Instagram and Facebook. We also do live shows every other week. So if you really want to see what these guys look like, cause they've been picking their nose the whole time. <laughs> uh, you could see them do it. You know, you can join us and, and maybe see them do it, do it in person as well. Uh, we'd love to see you there every other Wednesday to come check out our live shows, a way to interact with us and, and, and chat and have a good time. So for Sean, for Nick and for Eric, this has been Dean asking you to please be kind and rewind.